Hi, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Alex Cologne. This is Sasha Segan. And today we're going to talk about the top three news stories of the day. We're going to answer one of your questions and we're going to show you one cool thing from the PC Mag Labs. So let's start with the first news story of the day, which is LG just announced yesterday the new G3 smartphone, which has a super high res 2560 by 1440 screen. And you got to see it, right, Sasha? Yeah, that's 538 pixels per inch. So it's one pixel per inch for every member of the Electoral College. Uh, it's, it's got this 5.5 inch screen. It is so dense that I called up a web page on it and it could accurately display text at sizes that hurt my eyes. Like I really was like squinting at it and it wasn't blurry. It was so sharp down there. But I just wonder at what point you reach diminishing results because as a you know human approaching 40 years old wearing glasses, uh, if I was holding this at normal arm's length, I, I don't know if I would be able to appreciate the difference between this incredibly dense screen and a regular 1080p screen. Right, and is there a big battery to power that huge dense screen? Yeah, it has a 3000 milliamp hour battery. LG is great with batteries. They have their LG Chem, their own battery department working on battery chemistry. Um, it also has uh, a 2.5 gigahertz uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, micro SD memory card slot, uh, still has the weird power button on the back. I'm not a fan of that From the G2. Button. Yeah, they, they really played up how you can tap on the screen to wake it up because they know that people are really wobbly about that power button. The other big thing they were on about was uh, that the camera has laser autofocus that they wanted to make very clear was faster and more accurate than the Galaxy S5's autofocus. Um, so now our second story is that Google is building a car that drives itself. Yeah, um, now up until now I think the uh, self-driving car uh, prototypes have been based on existing cars retrofitted with self-driving hardware and this is uh, one of the first custom self-drive only cars. It has no steering wheel, it has no brakes, it has no gas pedal. It sounds like a human cannot actually drive this car. It sort of looks like a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, yeah, but it's, and like a human can sit in it. Right. It's got two seats, but, uh, but it's, it's not drivable by people, which is interesting because a couple of days ago on this show, we were talking about the California self-driving car regulations. Right. And the California self-driving car regulations require that a human be able to take over. So I think this car might not be street legal in California. Although I think Google, the, the versions that they're testing now, um, they're going to have a steering wheel and pedals so that it actually complies with the law. Okay, okay. And also, I mean, this, this thing, you know, it can't go over 25 miles an hour, so clearly they are being very cautious here. I, I guess it's kind of a self-driving golf cart. Um, and if you've seen one of the m more recent episodes of Silicon Valley, you'll see that uh, self-driving cars can go very wrong. So I don't know how I would feel about sitting in one yet. Yeah, I mean, I guess as long as it's only going 25 miles an hour and it isn't on the highway, uh, I, I, I think we can, uh, we can put up with uh, swerving around these things. Um, okay, and uh, now Skype is introducing real-time speech translation. That's really cool. Yeah, now this is something that a lot of people in the industry are working on, actually. NTT Docomo in Japan has had a, a real-time translation product between English and Japanese since 2011. Google has been working on this project for a while. Microsoft has been working on this project for a while. Obviously, you know, the babblefish has been a goal of human society for thousands of years. Right. And, uh, and so uh, at, the, at the code conference uh, yesterday, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella demoed this uh, real-time translation product between English and German, saying that it's coming out in beta this year for Windows 8. Maybe it'll be a commercial product by 2016. And the real issue here is that Skype does so much traffic that, you know, NTT Docomo's little bit of translation is just, you know, it's, it's a tiny little bit of load compared to how much translation load Skype would have to do to, to, to maintain demand. Right, but that would be a really cool thing if it does, you know, come, become available commercially. Yeah, but I just wonder, I, I wonder about the level of misunderstanding you would have, uh, especially if this is as good as, you know, Google Translate is, you know, <laughs> you get a lot of bite the wax tadpole That's when you're going true. to Google Translate. Uh, okay, well now let's answer one of your questions. Um, and actually a number of people have asked this uh, in the comments. They want to know if the Surface Pro 3 is better than the Surface Pro 2, how come the 2 got a 4 
4.5 rating, while the 3 got a 3.5. This is such a thing about our reviews that, uh, that, that people often don't understand because they look at the reviews later or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're always rating things uh, relative to, number one, what the manufacturer is promising, and number two, what their competition is in the market at the time of release. So if the competition changes, if the market changes, then the rating changes. And now I talked to the, the people on our desktops and laptops desk who, uh, who edited the Surface Pro reviews, and they said that, number one, the Surface Pro 3 is more expensive than the Surface Pro 2, but is not a major performance improvement, right. which they found uh, kind of disappointing. Um, and also, Satya Nadella, the Microsoft CEO, was saying that this will really replace your laptop and your tablet. And they just didn't find it 100% living up to that promise. So that makes it more of a, you know, good product. A, we, can, we can recommend this product, but not a, whoa, this is changing the world product. Okay, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to show you one cool thing from the PCMag Labs. And today's cool thing is the Fluke Link Sprinter. Now, this is one of those very specialized tools where if you need it, it is fabulous. Um, this is for testing and troubleshooting problems with Ethernet networks. Uh, you can connect it to a port on your switch. You can connect it to you know, anything that plugs into this Ethernet port at the bottom. And it runs a series of tests to find out where the problem is. You know, is, it, uh, is it that the port isn't supplying power? Is it that you aren't getting uh, DHCP? Is it that uh, you can connect to the Ethernet network, but you can't go beyond that out to the Internet? Um, it's $269. It's very easy to use. The results come up on a cloud service, so you can see them from any web browser or from your smartphone or tablet. Um, and uh, just if you're the kind of if you're a network administrator, basically, who's going around trying to figure out what's wrong with these things, our uh, network expert Samara Lin says that uh, this is a really invaluable tool. We gave it uh, 4.5 stars and our editor's choice. Very cool. And uh, thanks for watching today, and we'll see you again tomorrow.